There have been many dark chapters in British history, including many involving colonising lands and how the British treated local people. But inside of their own country, there were a number of horrific executions in which a number of children went to their deaths at the gallows and the scaffold. There was one execution we have covered recently in which Alice Glaston, during the reign of Henry VIII, was executed for an unknown crime, along with a couple of other men in an English town. But this was not just an isolated incident. Throughout the centuries in Britain, there were scores of other children who were sentenced to death for a number of different crimes. But many of these have been forgotten in history. Join us today as we look at the brutal forgotten executions of children in Britain. And remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, the execution of children was not a rare occasion. At the time, the laws did not take into account that children were minors and that teenagers also may not know the difference between right and wrong. In fact, the age of criminal responsibility was just seven, meaning a child of just seven could be imprisoned and sentenced to death or transported for crimes such as theft. There were many examples of children who were aged between seven and thirteen having their death sentences commuted and the same happened for girls. Girls were typically hanged for very serious crimes such as murder and witchcraft, but teenage boys were executed for more offences. The youngest child to have been executed in England was a boy named as John Dean, who had been found guilty at the Abingdon Assizes of arson, and he was killed on the 24th of February 1629. His age was stated in the records as being between 8 and 9, and he set fire to two houses in Windsor and it was judged he had done this with malice, revenge and spite. This meant the judge did not reprieve him. There have been other ideas about who the youngest executed person in Britain was, and it's considered that Michael Hammond and his sister Anne may have been 7 and 11 when they were killed. The children were referred to as small, however there is debate around the actual age of these two when they were hanged. When the hangman placed the noose around their necks, it was said that there was a huge clap of thunder and lightning when this did occur. But the problem is that many court records were not kept, and also that they did not give the ages of the defendants who were then sentenced to death. Many of the child executions were not well reported in local press, but in the 18th century there were many more examples of this happening. William Jennings was a 12-year-old boy who was hanged at Tyburn for breaking into houses and also at Tyburn, a 16-year-old named Thomas Smith was hanged for the same offence, as well as William King, who was a year or two older. Tyburn was an infamous site of execution, where many were hanged, drawn and quartered. But there was a girl named Martha Pillar, who was hanged for stealing in a shop, and further boys aged 17 were also executed there for burglary. There were a number of serious offenders also killed, including James Booty, who was executed in May 1722 for the fact he assaulted a young girl. One of the most shocking executions took place in March 1738 as near to Gallows Hill in Winchester a bloody execution of children occurred. 16-year-old Mary Grote had been tied onto a hurdle and drawn along in a procession along with two men. They were taken to the execution site and the young Mary was then tied to a stake and she was then set on fire being burned at the stake. She had been convicted of murdering her mistress by poisoning and suffered a truly horrific death. Further executions took place all across England of children, for example on Gallows Hill in Nottingham, a 15-year-old girl named Elizabeth Morton was hanged for murdering a two-year-old child. Susanna Underwood was hanged at Gloucester for burning a barn and she was even documented as having bad manners at her execution as she refused to shake the hand with her executioner on the scaffold but there were many more crimes in the 18th century that children were being executed for. One girl who went to her death was hanged for publishing false forged wills and documentation. She claimed she did not know what she was doing, as she could not read or write, but was killed regardless. One of the most shocking cases of the 18th century took place in Dorchester in March 1794, as 15-year-old Elizabeth Marsh was convicted of murdering her own grandfather. She was due to be hanged two days after her death sentence was passed, but this was not possible, as executions could not take place on a Sunday. 
her sentence was delayed by a day, and Elizabeth was kept in chains for one extra day, and was then given bread and water before she was killed. Her remains were then given to local medical surgeons, who dissected it. But the child executions in Britain continued well into the 19th century. Children continued to be sentenced to death for a variety of crimes, but many more had their sentences commuted as the public began to become outraged at the scenes in British towns of children and young people being executed. Anne Mead was 16 when she was found guilty of murdering Charles Proctor, a boy of just 16 months, by feeding him a spoonful of arsenic. She was then executed on the gallows in front of a large crowd because of this. 17-year-olds were also executed, with one young man, David Duffield, being executed for murdering an 11-year-old girl. After his hanging, his body was displayed in chains, and he was gibbeted because of his evil crime. Also, Mary Morgan was hanged for murdering her illegitimate child. She accidentally became pregnant, but following the birth of her child, she abandoned him, and for this, and leaving her child, she was killed. The youngest girl executed in the 19th century was Hannah Bocking, who had been found guilty of murdering another woman by poisoning, named Jane Grant. Outside Newgate Prison in London around the same time, a 15-year-old boy, Henry Lavelle, was hanged for highway robbery. Outside Newgate Prison and the within the walls, there were a number of executions of young people that occurred for conducting crimes within London and the local area. On the 1st of August 1831, John Bell was executed for murdering a 13-year-old boy, and Bell himself was just 14. He and his brother, who was 11, killed the boy to steal nine shillings from him, as he was collecting this on behalf of his disabled father. The pair were tried, and despite being young, the shocking nature of their crime saw them executed, using the new drop scaffold, outside of Maidstone Prison. Bell was probably the youngest person hanged in the 1800s. There was a young boy of nine sentenced to death, but he was reprieved after his housebreaking conviction and sentence of death shocked too many people. Towards the end of the 1800s, executions of teenagers were still taking place. Many were being killed for murdering different people in society, and the final teenager to hang in the 19th century was 18-year-old George Nunn, who was killed on the 21st of November 1899 for murdering a married woman. Things did change in the 20th century, as a Children's Act of 1908 stated that the minimum age of execution must be 16. The last juvenile to be given a death sentence was Harold Wilkins, who was condemned in 1932 for murder, but he was reprieved because of his age. There were 14 18-year-olds executed in the 20th century, but the executions of children were not tens of centuries ago. They were a lot closer in Britain to the modern day than you would think. This occurred within a couple of centuries, and not during the reign of Henry VIII. With this it shows you how brutal crime and punishment was in the recent history of Britain, and how disturbing executions were. Many of the children sentenced to death were killed for crimes, which today would grant minimal prison time, but it shows you how different the justice system really was. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.